Kai. Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 222, Fuming. One heard that Prince Ruai has a lot of feelings for Ruai Wang currently. Yik said, a few days ago, one heard that both of them toured Long Yi hands to hands. It can be seen that Prince Ruai loves Shen Mi out to the bones. Speaking of which, that Shen Miao's appearance is not as good as yours so one do not know how could another party be fascinated by her. Yik looked towards Yi Mai, does older sister still wants to enter the residence of Prince Ruai? Yi Mai was somewhat upset. She was totally unable to showcase her superiority in front of Zi Yan. When she was in Qin province previously, she would be invincible to whichever man that she wanted to make use of. However when facing Zi Yuan, she always felt that there was nowhere to start. Zi Yuan did not pay any attention to her and Yi Mai could feel in the gaze that Zi Jing Xing used when he looked at her. It was no different from looking at Luan or, or any other daughters of Great Liang officials. She felt that she could not subdue Zi Yuan at all because Zi Yuan did not view her as a female. Thinking about that, Yi Mai spoke evidently. Let's talk about it later and since Yi Mao Kai did not mention of this matter at the time being, one do not need to think more about it. The most urgent task on hand is to find out what problems is happening to the Yi family. If the Yi family collapse one day, it cannot implicate us so it is better to make plans early. Actually, Yi hummed and hawed, previously Yi Mao Kai can to look for me once and have some thoughts of wanting you to enter the palace. Entering the palace? Yi Mai's heart jumped and she suddenly laughed. She had a variety of laughter but it was somewhat meaningful. Yi Mao Kai saw that it was difficult to hook up with Zi Yuan so he let me climb into the imperial family. Entering the palace naturally did not mean entering the palace ordinary but entering the palace to be the emperor's woman. Yi Mai sneered. It is very strange that there is not even a descendant in the palace so there must be some queer circumstances. If I enter the palace and do not have any children, one would not have any support for a hundred years. If the emperor passed on, would one even need to accompany him for burial? Yi Mao Kai only have thoughts of having good relations with the imperial family and did not care about my life and death. I will not enter the palace. Let him end such thoughts. At the end of her words, there was some viciousness in it. It was not that Yi Mai did not think about entering the palace but it was because she had always been good and analyzing the pros and cons. Currently the emperor did not have any children and one feared that it was the emperor that was having the problem so how long could a female without any son be able to live in the inner palace? Not mentioning the inner palace, even if it was the inner courtyard of a big family. Death was the only route if one did not have a son. It was both shrinking one's head and keeping one's thoughts to one's mind for an entire lifetime but these were not what Yi Mai wanted. She wanted to climb up, and continue to go up to enjoy power and benefits and these are more important than entering the palace to be the emperor's woman. Yik was somewhat awkward. I also guessed that you would think as such and immediately told Yi Mao Kai that it is not possible. Oh? Yi Mai took a glance at him and said fluttering, you really told him like this? Yi avoided Yi Mai's gaze and said, older sister, you still don't believe in me? Yi Mai smiled but one did not know what was the meaning behind the smile. In short, both you and I have to be aware of one's identity. The Yi family is not our real home and the Yi family people are not family. Moreover the Yi family have their selfish thoughts. I will find ways to figure out what is actually going on with the Yi family and what kind of plans do they have. If there is a day where the Yi family fall into misfortune, both of us must not fall in together and it is the best if we could withdraw safely. Older sister, how are things this serious? Yik disagreed, if it was really this serious. The Yi family would have long begun to seek a way out for themselves. Yi Mai smiled coldly. One feared that the Yi family themselves do not know that the disaster is coming. Just as she was speaking, one heard someone outside calling, eldest sister, second older brother. Yi went up to open the doors and saw a servant pushing Yi Hongwang outside. Even though Yi Mao Kai was shrewd, 
he treated this crippled son well and had specially instructed people to make a movable chair for him so that the servant could push him around and he could go around the Yi residence. However Yi Furin did not really like this concubine-born son that was placed under her name. Yi Hongwang however liked Yi Mai and Yi Kalot, most likely because he felt the Yi residence had been so quiet and desolate for so many years and now with siblings, he would be happy. He also had a simple personality like that of a child and did not seem to be raised by the Yi family. However when one remembered that he had never leave the residence, it was natural to have such a simple personality since he would only be reading other than playing chess with Yi Maokai. Yi Mai smiled, what matter does third younger brother have? Yi Hongwang's appearance was not like Yi Maokai nor Yi Furen. He most likely looked similar like that late concubine and his facial features were rather delicate. He also smiled, father instructed you to make a trip to the study and I took the opportunity to bring the nine connecting chains to eldest sister. One heard that eldest sister is an expert in nine connecting chains, thus one brought it over. Yi Mai took that nine connecting chains over and said, when I unlock it, one will personally send it to third younger brother, thanking eldest sister. Yi Hongwang looked very excited about it. Yi Mai smiled gently and turned her head back to look at Yi and saw the solemnness in the other's gaze. For Yi Mao Kai to call them both into the study at such a time there was obviously some new matters for them to handle. He was using them as chess pieces but how would Yi Mai and brother let themselves be in another's mercy? It would definitely be another exchange of guessing game again. On the second day. The news about consort Jing being pregnant had been spread throughout the entire Long Yi. Emperor Yongle had been childless for so many years, naturally there were various speculations about it. The most was that Emperor Yongle was unable to have a child due to some health reasons and because of this reason, there was struggles and non-stop fighting over these years. However when consort Jing became pregnant, this should have even more meaning to it. One feared that it was not an issue with Emperor Yongle or perhaps Emperor Yongle deliberately did so but now Emperor Yongle had let consort Jing get pregnant and it also clarified some questions. Thus a bunch of officials started to stupidly think of sending their residence's daughter to the palace. At another side, some of Long Yi's officials who had been taking the wait and see attitude started to have new resolution. In any case, Consort Jing's pregnancy had brought about a lot of influences in Great Liang's court and inner palace. When Shen Miao spoke of the matter to Zi Jingxing, she also said, previously because the emperor was childless, the inner palace is clean and there are not much disputes but now that Consort Jing's pregnancy is spread out, all types of high-ranking officials want to send their daughters into the palace and rush to have children. One fears that the inner palace will be chaotic. It was the scariest for the usual calm water to become alive because a stone that was thrown into the pond. Zi Jingxing smiled, however it is only if one can actually give birth. Emperor Yongle and gotten them to drink the concoction to avoid pregnancy and consort Jing's pregnancy was an accident. However because of this accident, the palace would be even more rigorous and strict on this aspect in the future so that no one would be able to have any single opportunity. But the Lu family is too anxious. Shin Miao supported her chin, the news was not even circulated in the palace and they spread it out first. Now the entire Long Yi knows about it. The faster it is spread, the faster one dies. Zi Jingxing was wearing the outer robes at the moment and Shen Miao stood up to help him tidy up his collar. He looked down at Shen Miao and said, But if you are pregnant with my child, I will instruct people to make it known to everyone in Long Yi. Shen Miao glared at him, If you dare to let another female bear your child, what about it? Zi Jingxing frowned. Shen Miao pulled his collar tightly and said fiercely, the matter of the elimination of the entire household of Prince Ru I would also be spread to everyone in Long Yi. Zi Jingxing laughed out loud and hugged her waist before lowering his head to whisper into her ears. One have a ferocious wife at home and one spirit is weary and all strength is exhausted. One fear that it would not be possible. Ferocious? Shen Miao almost erupted in anger. Zi Jingxing wanted to speak more when Bao Zhao's voice was heard from outside. Master, Furen, 
the horse carriage is prepared. Do we set off now? Shen Miao released her hands, we will speak when we return. Zi Jingxing smiled slyly, one let the ruler freely reign. Shen Miao, get out. They were to enter the palace. These days Zi Jingxing frequently headed to the palace to discuss with Emperor Yang Le on how to deal with the Lu family. Most likely the Lu family also felt the pressure and started to rearrange the troops but at the other side felt that since consort Jing was pregnant, Emperor Yang Le would definitely not do anything to the Lu family. At one side they were suspicious, at the other side they believe firmly, thus the Lu family themselves were confused, which went along with the imperial family's wishes. The forces of both sides started preparing thus Zi Jingxing appeared to be exceptionally busy. Xin Miao also guessed Ming Qi's situation from Pei Lang's letter about the future and helped the Shen family escape from Fu Ziyu Yi's surveillance. Today Shen Miao also planned to enter the palace to visit Empress Xianda and coincidentally Zi Jingxing was also entering the palace. Thus both husband and wife went in together. Once entering the palace, Zi Jingxing left for the imperial study to meet Emperor Yongla and since Shen Miao wanted to see Empress Xianda, she let Tao Gu Gu guide her. Shen Miao saw that the road taken were carpeted and there were many palace maids walking in the palace. Thus she became curious and asked what was going on. Tao Gu Gu said, this is instructed by her ladyship consort Jing. Fearing that she would knock on to something when she walk and harm the child in her womb thus there are much more palace servants than before serving. These days, everyone in the palace are crazy busy and her ladyship the empress is generous and cannot be bothered to bicker with her thus she had turned the entire inner palace upside down. Tao Gu Gu was Empress Xianda's female official and thus did not need to take care of what she spoke but because of Empress Xianda, she had treated Shen Miao as one of her own and would not conceal her disgust for consort Jing. She said, there is nothing too much but it is very tiring for everyone, making others feel unhappy. Shen Miao raised her eyebrows and asked, what is the emperor's attitude? Tao Gu Gu smiled eccentrically. The emperor did not change his attitude towards consort Jing due to this child thus consort Jing is brooding because of it, which created all these tricks. After thinking about something, she continued, today the Yi family's young lady and young master also entered the palace. The young lady of the Yi family even went to visit consort Jing and is most likely in Jinghua Palace. Did Wang Fu saw the Yi family when entering the palace? The Yi family? Xin Miao shook her head, one did not see. However she was turning over in her mind. The Yi family's young lady and young master natural referred to Yi Mai and Yi. Yi Mai and Yi came to see consort Jing. The Lu family and the Yi family were not particularly intimate so why the need for today? To suddenly see consort Jing? One fear that the wine lover's heart was not in the cup. Could it be that they were scheming about something? But why let Yi Mai come to talk with consort Jing? Not saying how Yi Mai was but consort Jing was a stupid one so how could she be able to handle such big responsibility? One fear that the Yi family had found the wrong person. She vaguely felt that something was wrong but she was here to visit Empress Xianda so it was not good to talk more about the matter with Tao Gu Gu. She was filled with doubts as she arrived in the Imperial Gardens. Empress Xianda was currently not in Wei Yang Palace as the summer came to the end. Even though Long Yi's summers are long, at the end it, the days started to cool down. After too many hot and stuffy days, it was rare that there was such a cooling time, thus it was good to sit in the gardens for some air. When Shen Miao saw Empress Xianda, she was brewing tea and upon seeing Shen Miao's arrival, she invited her over for tea appreciation. This is Kaiyu Shan Huang directly translated as Autumn Mountain Yellow. This is the tea that was newly sent in this year. Ben Gong likes it a lot so you should also taste it. Empress Xianda smiled as she spoke. She seemed to like drinking tea and she herself was also full of fragrant, a female with great aftertaste. Shen Miao took the teacup up to taste a sip and tasted the bitterness between her lips and teeth. However in the bitterness, there was a long lingering scene that made it a very unique tea. Empress Xianda asked, how is it? Shen Miao placed the teacup down, the tea that your highness the empress brew is the best. Ben Gong do not have any hobbies and only like this. 
Empress Yonda smiled, as this tea tastes bitter, most young females would not like it too much but one do not know why but one felt that you will like me. Most likely Ben Gong find that you are somewhat similar to Ben Gong. Shin Miao said that she didn't dare but Empress Yonda smiled without caring about it, don't talk about these. That day after you returned, Jing Xing should have spoken to you about matters of the palace. Shin Miao was slightly startled, spoke a little. You will be curious and Jing Xing dotes his wife so naturally he will tell you everything. Empress Yonda smiled, then what did you feel after listening to it? What do you think of the current situation? She was unable to snatch Shen Miao's man. Unable to take Shen Miao's life and could not rob Shen Miao's fortune away. Those words had a meaning of giving serious consideration to Shen Miao's words. Shen Miao did not dare to be vague and thought about it before speaking. Now that the ending of the Lu family is a foregone conclusion, the child in consort Jing's womb would not be able to turn the tide. Since the emperor and his highness have already made a decision, everything else will fall naturally. How about that child? Empress Yonda took a sip of tea and asked, Do you think that child should be kept or not? Shen Miao paused before saying, There would be no impact to the overall situation if the child is kept or not. It is all your ladyship's decision to keep the child or not, Ben Gong's decision. Empress Yonda sighed gently, There is always a thorn stuck in Ben Gong's heart but Ben Gong is not callous enough to pull out this thorn. She mocked herself. This empress position is really not suitable for Ben Gong. Getting used to it is one thing, being suitable is another. Shen Miao did not speak as whatever she say would be wrong at this point of time. Empress Yonda turned the topic around, Wang Pei, without a doubt you are a good mistress of the entire residence of Prince Ruai but if in the future you need to carry more responsibilities and face more complicated matters. Will you be able to do well? Shen Miao's heart jumped. There was another meaning to Empress Xiander's words, seemingly implying something. If it was in the past, Shen Miao would not think much about it but Zijing Xing had told her about Emperor Yongle's matters. If Emperor Yongle could not live past 35, if Emperor Yongle had other plans, Shen Miao seemed to have immediately guessed their intentions. She composed herself and said, Your ladyship. No one can say anything firm of the future but Chen Fu will accompany by his highness side. No matter what his highness does, Chen Fu will assist. Empress Yonda looked at her for a while before shaking her head and sighing, It is good that you have no ambitions but it is also not good. She continued, But Jing Xing is not the emperor so your fortune is very good. However you have to understand that if one day you reach to the height, there are a lot of matters that one cannot act in one's own volition. You might not like it but you cannot show that you do not like. You have to do it because this is the truth of the world. Was Empress Xionda telling her of her own feelings? Shen Miao calmly said, Chen Fu would not do that. At the beginning when the true of the world was first mentioned, everyone would be suspicious of it. If one could not retain one's initial heart, then there is no meaning to reaching a higher position. Being unable to act in one's own volition only happens when one do not have enough power to change the environment around them. When Empress Xionda heard it, she was lost in thoughts for a long time and when she finally reacted, she looked at Shen Miao deeply. That gaze was very complicated that Shen Miao was unable to describe it clearly. Perhaps there was some envious and some self-depreciation. She then said, Perhaps so. You spoke correctly but Ben Gong's half a lifetime has passed so one does not have any time to change. She was somewhat wan and Shen Miao felt that as compared to the last time she came, it looked like Empress Yonda has great changes and has become old. Was it because of Consort Jing? Shen Miao was thinking about it in her heart and asked, one heard that the siblings from the Yi family had also entered the palace to meet Consort Jing. Since a consort carrying a dragon seed came out from the Lu family, naturally the bugs of Long Yi will start to move. The Yi family was supposed to visit Ben Gong thus they entered the palace today but Ben Gong saw that the Win lover's heart was not in the cup thus they were released. Most probably the Yi family saw that Lu Jing is pregnant and have other ideas and thus wanted to take action from Lu Jing's end. Empress Yonda's gaze was somewhat drawn out, 
That young lady that the Yi family found is sure beautiful. Not only she is beautiful, she is also very intelligent. Not only she is very intelligent, she is also ambitious. This kind of female is best suited to survive in the inner palace. Shen Miao's gaze slightly lagged. Yi Mai wants to enter the palace? My Furin at the end became Ming Chi's Fu Ziyu Yi's empress but not only she had become a person of great Liang, even the future would be changed. Could it be that she wanted to become Emperor Yang Le's woman and be the empress of great Liang? Shen Miao felt it was ridiculous and a joke. Perhaps so. Empress Zhonda said without caring much. But the inner palace of Long Yi exists in name but in reality is gone. If Yi Mai wants to rival for affection or fight for power, she had miscalculated. Moreover the emperor does not intend to receive anyone. If she have other ways? Shen Miao said. Yi Mai was vicious and would climb upward by any means possible. She had personally experienced it in her past life so she knew that it was impossible for Yi Mai to return back with one's tail between one's legs. Shen Miao did not want to underestimate the opponent and was not willing to make a big mistake because of her carelessness. Empress Zhonda looked strangely at Shen Miao. You seemed like you really do not like this young lady of the Yi family. Then she spoke in relief, honestly this Yi Mai has bad intentions and Ben Gong could see it. Ben Gong has stayed in this palace for so many years and Yi Mai's eyes have too much greed so it is naturally for you to be wary of her. Initially with regards to the matter of the imperial hunt, there were rumors outside that you oppose Yi Mai because of jealousy and Ben Gong had guessed then that Yi Mai is not simple. Upon seeing today, it is indeed true, Shen Miao said. Chen Fu indeed do not like her at all. Because of Zi Jingxing? Empress Zhonda's eyes charmingly squinted and she joked, no need to worry. Jingxing is very intelligent and would not like even smarter females. He would not even like Yi Mai, that have a greedy and ambitious heart. Shen Miao. Empress Zhonda's words made her seem to be very stupid. Ben Gong is not too involved with the discussion between Jing Xing and the Emperor on the Yi family but guessed that some of the reasons were of you. However Ben Gong personally do not like the Yi family. Even though the Yi family are civil officials, they do not have the style of civil officials and instead are sleek and hypocritical without a heart of an official. The entire Yi family only have dishonest practices but Empress Zhonda seemed to have thought of something and said, The youngest young master of the Yi family is not bad. Ben Gong had spoken to him and he is as innocent as a child. It is a pity that due to his condition, he is not respected by other in the residence. Shen Miao had also heard of the crippled young master of the Yi family but she did not know how the other's character was. Upon hearing Empress Zhonda's words, she could not help but sighed. It was rare to have such a good person but one's luck was too bad. Empress Zhonda said, not long later, the situation of Long Yi would be very tense. One fear that the residence of Prince Ruai would be monitored very closely by others. Jing Xing is often outside and there would be places in the Prince residence that could not be taken care and it would be hard to prevent things from happening. You must be very careful. Xin Miao had a solemn expression. Chen Fu understands, when dealing with both the Lu and Yi family, undoubtedly there would be a storm in Long Yi. She as Zi Jing Xing's wife, the Wang of the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank, naturally would become the public's target. Empress Zhonda patted her hand, you have to start learning these. Shen Miao complied and just as they were speaking, Tao Gu Gu came in with a palace maid. Tao Gu Gu said, who have been and Ning Gairan are quarreling at the flower area and it has reached to a point that it had become awful. Does your ladyship want to go over to take a look? These days that consort Jing was pregnant, the other females in the palace were unable to remain calm. Initially everyone did not have children so it was not important if one did not have the emperor's favor. But it is different now as once there was one who went to heavens. Everyone would also want it. Everyone had some selfishness and thus there were more contradictions. In addition that many high-ranking officials had thoughts to send people to Emperor Yongle, the usually peaceful inner palace would encounter chaos every three to five days. Even though it was not big, but it would add frustration to another when these happen often. There was an unpleasant express on Empress Yonda's face. No matter how good one temper was, 
one would be a bad mood if these kept on happening. May your ladyship go take a look first. Shin Miao said, there is no need to be concerned of me. She did not have any thoughts to go and see the fuss with Empress Zyanda. This was the inner palace of Long Yi and this did not have any relation to Shen Miao and she could not help at all. Empress Zyanda had no choice but stood up and looked at Shen Miao. Ben Gong will take a trip to the flower area. Wang F can rest here and drink some tea. If one feel bored, then do walk around the gardens, as long as one don't go too far away. Shen Miao had Ba Zhao and Hua Xiang by her side and they had martial arts skills thus they were not afraid of any accidents. Moreover there are guards everywhere in the palace thus, they were naturally safe. Shen Miao complied and Empress Xianda and Tao Gu Gu left. Shen Miao held the teacup but Empress Xianda's words floated up. She had always felt that Empress Xianda had another meaning to her words. Previously she had thought before that if Emperor Yang Le really could not live long, when Emperor Yang Le leave, who would be sitting on the empire of Great Liang. Previously when Consort Jing was not pregnant, one thought that they most likely did not think of letting the emperor's descendants to continue on the imperial throne. Moreover the poison was not removed cleaning from Emperor Yongle and the children that were born would also be congenitally deficient and thus would not be able to bear the great undertaking. Since it was so, then those that had the imperial family bloodline and had the qualification to inherit the position of the Emperor of Great Liang would only be Zi Jing Xing. Did Zi Jing Xing become the Emperor in the last lifetime? At least when she died, Ming Chi had collapsed and Emperor Yongle was alive and Zi Jing Xing led the troops and fought. Then in this lifetime, could it be that Zi Jing Xing would be the Emperor? If Zi Jing Xing became the Emperor then she would definitely be the Empress. From the ancient times, there was no precedent for there to be only one person in the inner palace. She was very certain that she would not be able to tolerate her husband having other women and once this became real, Shen Miao could only do nothing more than say you are heartless so I will divorce and cut things cleanly with Zi Jing Xing. However this fate was not easy to come by and she did not want this husband and wife fate that took two lifetimes to come to fruition. Her heart was somewhat stuffy and she stood up, planning to go to the side of the pond for some air as Ba Zhao and Hua Xiang followed her. There was a dense woods by the gardens and under the layers of trees. There were complicated and winding small paths and each path lead towards different direction, each with a different scenery, making it very elegant. It was just that Shen Miao did not have any mood to appreciate any beautiful scenery. She walked to the side of the pond where the cold breeze blew onto her face. It was refreshing and allowed her to calm down. After standing for a while, she planned to sit back down at the stone table as she estimated that Empress Zyanda should be back. Just when she was leaving, her gaze passed by the woods that was at the side. It was just a fleeting glance. Shen Miao suddenly stopped. She stared closely at a side and felt that all the blood in her body became cold and hot. All the blood seemed to rush to her brain that she was standing unsteadily. That made Ba Zhao and Hua Xiang also nervously looked over but did not discover anything. Shen Miao suddenly parted the bush in front and ran towards the path at the side. Furen. Ba Zhao and Hua Xiang jumped in shock and quickly followed. Shen Miao ran very quickly and she did not notice her clothes and hair were caught in the branches. When one looked carefully, her hands were still shaking violently, her lips were white and her eyes were wide opened, not daring to relax for a little bit. She saw it. The youth's face that was hidden by the branches at the woods had a gentle smile and familiar expression. That was Fu Ming, her son. Fu Ming. She did not see wrongly. She was not wrong. Shen Miao desperately ran over but the Imperial Gardens routes lead towards all directions and each small path would lead to a different location. The trees were dense and that youth suddenly disappeared that it made her think that it was all her illusions. There was no more route in front. There was only a corner of the dark lake and also some rockery and long pavilions. Shen Miao could not find that youth. Hua Xiang and Ba Zhao followed behind and when they saw that Shen Miao was standing on the same spot, one did not know what she was thinking that she looked like she has lost her soul. Before there was any movement by the three of them, they suddenly heard a short scream from a woman before the sound of a heavy object falling onto the ground. Putong. 